This is another episode of The Blossom Podcast, your number one source for everything bariatric surgery, from pre op to post op. Registered dietitian Alex Conception gives you real, raw tips and motivation through your journey. This is The Blossom Podcast. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to The Blossom Podcast. I hope you're doing fantastic. It's been a minute. And I apologize for the delay. We've been really busy. But today, I do want to take a few minutes and talk about the eating and drinking question. Okay, do I have to wait 30 minutes to drink after I eat? And why can't I eat and drink at the same time? So, the common misunderstanding is that water will flush out the food and prevent nutrient absorption. There are actually multiple YouTube videos simulating this by taking what would be masticated food, put into a funnel, then pouring water down to show the food slide right through. Of course, this would lead you to believe that this can be a direct correlation to your stomach. Unfortunately, this is all doo-doo and it is incorrect. Okay, that's not how the body works. Your stomach is not the same as a funnel. If this were true, the intervention for gastroparesis would be simply water. Gastroparesis, um, by definition, is where the stomach can't empty normally. Okay, also, unlike a funnel, we also have what's called a pyloric sphincter. All right, yeah, sphincter. Um, anyhow, this is the muscle responsible for controlling the flow from your stomach to your small intestines. All right, just like when you poop, it just doesn't fall out, right? Sorry, I don't mean to be graphic, you know, but hopefully you get my point. Water does help get things through, but more so through a process called peristalsis. All right, this is a series of muscle contractions and relaxations through the GI. So if you can imagine a worm, you know, moving, kind of just contracting, relaxing, contracting, relaxing, moving down the sidewalk, right? That's kind of the same thing as uh, peristalsis. So, you know, there are situations of rapid gastric emptying after after uh, bariatric surgery and this is also known as dumping syndrome all right but this is less likely with the sleeve but can occur with high sugar or high fat this is why we always say protein and veggies first all right so to be fair yes studies have proven that gastric emptying is altered after the sleeve but even change in the rate of emptying is still affected by individual procedures. For example, simply the distance from the pylorus um, the sleeve starts is a factor in the rate of emptying. One study compares a group of sleeved patients measuring gastric emptying. They used, um, what is this, a uh, scintigraphy. They used scintigraphy, which is basically tracers that produce imaging of internal organs and structures inside the body after being swallowed in this case. This particular study compared the sleeve that started four centimeters versus seven centimeters from the pylorus. And if you don't know, the pylorus is the end of your stomach, basically where your stomach ends and your small intestines begin. The results of the study showed prolonged gastric emptying with those who have the shorter distance. Um, the point of me telling you this is because Something as small as two centimeters, two centimeter difference can make a difference in gastric emptying. Now, don't freak out and try to wonder what's my distance, right? There is nothing wrong with seven centimeters. It depends on a number of variables, all of which can't be determined until the surgeon goes in. Four centimeters is simply a, favor a favorable starting point. Okay, so going back to eating and drinking, the main issue is volume. Imagine a measuring cup, a half a cup measuring cup in your mind. Now, this is a rough estimate of your stomach's volume. We want to prioritize fluid. We also want to prioritize food. By doing them at the same time, you won't prioritize either. Okay, with that being said, I have good news. 30 minutes, this rule, it's not 
absolute. It is a guideline, okay? Everyone heals different and everyone progresses different. Just like one patient may tolerate 10 bites on day X, another patient may tolerate only two bites on day X, all right? What we recommend is simply starting with 30 minutes and work your way down. If you can hit 600 calories, 60 grams of protein, and 64 ounces of fluid waiting only 10 minutes, then by all means, go for it, okay? But you won't know that right off the bat. Healing, inflammation, pain, all factors in that one sip that may require a little bit more time, okay? So if you're the type of person that needs to sip and eat, go ahead, lubricate your mouth, lubricate your throat. There is no actual contraindication between food and water. You just need to start slow, okay? If you just, um, if you just remove a cast, you're not just going to run. Am I right? That's right. You're, you're going to take it slow. You're going to start walking. You're going to possibly, uh, you know, do some rehabilitation, whatever. But anyhow, you get my point. So start with the 30 minutes and at your pace, reduce the time you introduce water and see how you feel. All of these guidelines are in place for your safety as well as maximizing the potential of the sleeve, okay, especially in the time period that is most valuable. Other factors that can affect or influence the rate of gastric emptying would be calories, the concentration of carbohydrates, the source of carbohydrates, exercise, meal volume, meal temperature, fat, protein, all huge factors, even fiber, of course. So keep that into consideration. It's not as simple as, okay, let's just drink some water. It's going to affect in such a great way. There are so many factors involved, and that's what I'm trying to get across. Go at your pace because everybody's different. Every meal is going to be essentially different, right? Um, how you chew your food is going to be different, all of those things. But that's the takeaway, and yeah, that's pretty much it. And again, I hope this episode has answered your questions regarding eating and drinking. And if you do have any additional questions, of course, you can always email me, and I will get back to you. All right, so that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys in the next. Peace! This was another episode of The Blossom Podcast. For more motivation and future episodes with Alex, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any life-changing moments.